Hello, everybody. So, let's begin with a brief history lesson. The year is 2013. Sebastian Vettel has just won his fourth world championship and is at his peak in popularity. Podium with you. Please don't do that. That's not correct. Sebastian also went on a motoring show called Top Gear. You might have heard of it, and was the fastest man on the F1 time board. The F1 world champion being the fastest? Not surprising. But then, along comes McLaren driver Lewis Hamilton, and he's just moved to Mercedes, which caused everybody to say, Is that not a bit like moving from Manchester United to West Ham? It's a, a, a football reference. I don't get it either. Apparently West Ham are pretty bad. But before Lewis went to have absolutely no success at Mercedes, he wanted to have another crack at the Top Gear test track. And so he went to Top Gear and... You took our producer round the back and demanded that he get a dry session at the racetrack. Lewis had had enough of being second best, and so he went around and did it, beating Sebastian Vettel by a whole 1.1 seconds, posting a time of a 142.9, oh. obliterating the previous times. But here's the thing, Lewis was also very surprised at how fast he was. Please? I'm really surprised. <laughs> it, it's only just occurred to me that this was almost eight years ago now. <laughs> I'm getting old. And since then, Lewis has went on to have some success in F1. And that thus leads us on to sim racing, because you have seen many sim racing YouTubers, such as Jimmy, take an F1 car around a track and try to beat Lewis Hamilton's pole times. However, as far as I'm aware, nobody's tried to do this particular time. So, let's jump over into the sim rig. But, do you think we can beat him? Nope. Now, it goes without saying, this is going to be a very, very difficult test because when that happened and Clarkson was reading out the numbers, Lewis Hamilton himself was surprised at how fast that was. So that may be the trick today. We must be surprised. But before we jump into anything like this, just a quick reminder, this channel is in affiliation with Fanatec. If you'd like to get your hands on any of the gear that I use, then there is a link in the description down below. So we're not gonna beat about the bush here. I've got to keep taking my glove off to... By the way, just so you know, okay, I know we're already a little bit into the video already and I don't wanna waste people's time, but okay, if you are gonna get a sim rig like mine, obviously, you want to have a keyboard and a mouse. At the moment, I don't have the money or the space to have a keyboard and mouse tray. So I used to have to just get up and go to my keyboard, which is all the way over there. So to save a little bit of money and space, I bought myself one of these. And it is the most frustrating piece of equipment. I've, I mean, it's convenient, but it's so annoying to use. All right, okay. So here we are, behind the wheel of the Suzuki Liana. Now, I can already tell there's going to be a few of you saying that you're driving in the wrong FOV. There's a reason for that. It's just so you guys have got something a bit more enjoyable to watch. You know, so you can see a bit more of the car. Okay, let's see what we can do in three, two, one. Good start, good start, and away we go. Tell you what, after so many years of watching the original cast of Top Gear on the original track, it does feel a little bit surreal driving this. Now, I don't know what gear to take this, but we're going to be very ginger on the brakes. Turn it in, keep it in third gear, try and make it, uh, keep it a little bit smooth. Full power now, all the way down into Chicago. Get down, and I think, second gear, get on the brakes. We're going to try and keep it tight. Keep the power, get, feed the power on a little bit early. And away we go, all the way up to down to Hammerhead. Now, I do remember that Clarkson always used to say, to be quickest through here, you've got to keep it within the white lines. So, well, that was a bit much. Keep it in second gear. Very smooth, very smooth. That was very nice. And he's always said, coming up to this corner, you need to be flat out, which I can imagine should be pretty easy. Yep, no problem whatsoever. Tell you what, I do actually miss watching the Suzuki Liana go around on Top Gear. I don't know what what are the uh, the new casts using. Oh, oh, that's wide. That is wide. That is so wide. Oh no, we've messed it up. That's gonna be invalid. A 146.6, almost four seconds ago. So three and a half seconds to. 
clear and back. I think I know where we were going wrong. It's just because we don't know our way around the track. It's just getting our braking markers right and getting the right gears. So let's have another go real quick. I'm not sure that was a good start or not, but the wheel spin was a lot less. I do remember that I think the first ever F1 driver to come onto Top Gear was Damon Hill. I think it was. Oh, 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 oh. That's understeer. Come on, keep going. Power, power. Oh, that was terrible. Terrible. So wide through there. Yep, the horn works. Here we go. Relatively tidy through there. This car is so slow. It's unbelievable. Hey, here's a thought. Maybe we should do a sim racing version of this. Get people to download the Suzuki Liana and the Top Gear test track and see what they can do. But adopt the uh, the second reasonably priced car rule. Where they only get five practice laps. Here we go. Oh, that was slightly faster, despite us having a terrible Chicago. Back to the drawing board, I think. So if you don't know, Duns Dunsfold, which is where this racetrack is, is an airfield, okay? And for all of the seasons of Old Top Gear I watched, that Boeing 747 was there in the background of almost all of it. And I'm curious as to know who owns that, or if it ever gets used. All right, in the middle. Here we go. Nice start, nice start. We're off. All right, okay, and break. Third gear, a bit harder on the brakes, oh, keeping it nice and tight. Now I do remember that Clarkson always used to say that the Stig took the widest line possible through that corner, because he said the Stig was convinced it was the fastest, and even some Formula One drivers took that line. I think Vettel did, and Mark Webber, but I'm not sure. Come on, let's go, let's go, oh, almost a second up already. Oh, that's, that's going to be... Come on, can we keep it tight? Yes! We saved it. That might be good, actually. It's just our corner speed was pretty terrible. Cutting it very nicely. We only just want to drop down one gear for this corner. Power on early. Come on, come on, come on! Oh, 145.2. Only a second quicker. Where can I get that time? So the last couple of corners, definitely. I think it's the first corner and the last two corners. Because I know you can go a lot wider in Gambon. And I don't know if I should slow down or change down the gear for Hammerhead. Power steering in this car feels so weird. It's like turning a valve that's like being greased up by custard. All right, all right. Start finish line. Okay. I'm going to try power shifting and just not take my foot off the accelerator. Can we break a bit later? It's such a difficult corner, that one. Come on, power early, power early. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Chicago felt good that time. Just got to get nail hammerhead this time because I don't think... I mean, we went into it a lot faster last time, but I don't think it was quicker. Oh, getting the power up much earlier there. We went a little bit wide, but that was on the exit, so might be okay. Have we shaved off any time? I haven't been checking the clock. I'm too scared to. We're only a tenth up. Oh, dear. cut the corner because they allowed corner cutting oh dearie me seven tenths in those last two we got half a second in those last two corners dearie me our 44 4 so we right now I think we've uh, matched Nigel Mansell's time. I think it's all within the first corner, to be honest. If Lewis Hamilton was surprised that he was a full second faster, what was he on? Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, it's a tenth slower! Oh! Oh!
Tensor messed it up on the last corner! I'm just gonna check my inputs. Believe it or not, I'm actually making excuses for myself. I've got my pedal input here. I'm just gonna keep this here in case of a sticky break. That's literally... <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to excuse myself why I'm half a sec or six tenths of a second slower than Lewis Hamilton. It's impossible. I just cannot be slower than him. Come on, show me a sticky break, please. Please. <laughs> Not that I'm making myself an excuse, however, there was something I did with the brakes the other day, okay? And I know it seems ridiculous, however, I did alter something with the brakes. So let me just save the replay real quick. If I turn the gamma off, what is- what is the gamma? Whoa! Right, okay, there is something. If I do that, it seems to be a bit more even. If this doesn't work, then I am just slower. My braking should be con more consistent now. Oh, that feels a little... Oh, that feels way more consistent. Well, it, fe it feels more natural. Oh, we're flying already. If I beat it first try, I, this is just going to be the funniest moment in sim racing history. All because of I, I didn't have my brakes right. It feels way better already, though. Because I haven't done anything to the car, but I've just done stuff to my setup. So that is okay, I think. Forty-three-five instantly. Okay, right, lads. The the game is back on now. <laughs> yeah, I should probably take the Billy Piper line. If you don't know, Billy Piper is probably the only person in Top Gear history in the celebrity form to uh, ever get a penalty because she cut half the track. <laughs> That was good, that was really good, that felt brilliant actually. Three, five, but the last two corners were fluffed again. We're getting so which just it's half a second. It's half a second. Come on. Oh come on. I cannot go any faster, no matter how hard I try. But there are some that say that Lewis Hamilton is the greatest of all time. And to be fair, I think getting within half a second of him isn't that bad, to be honest. Considering that the next person who was closest was Sebastian Vettel at a 144 dead, I think it was. And as a reminder, even Lewis Hamilton was surprised at that time. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Coyote Racing. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. It would help me out a lot and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you would like to see more videos like this, 
then think about hitting that subscribe button if you're new here with the notification bell on. Also as a quick reminder, this channel is in affiliation with Fanatec, so if you would like to check out any of the gear that I use, there is a link in the description below. And we are also in affiliation with MixedEnergy.net, so if you would like to get your hands on some good old fashioned energy to keep you awake through the night, or just to give you a bit more focus, then head over to MixedEnergy.net and make sure you use code COYOTE when you check out for 10% off. But anyway guys, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you guys in the next race. Have a good night everybody.